Question 200 of Leap Code, number of islands. Given an M by N 2D binary grid, grid, which represents a map of ones, land and zeros water, return the number of islands. So an island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent land horizontally or vertically. You may assume all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water. So we have two examples here. The first grid has an output of one, so there's one island in here and the island is formed by these connecting ones. And remember the outside of this will all be surrounded by water, so it'll be surrounded by zeros. And in the second example, we have a grid with an output of three, and that's formed from these four ones connecting together adjacently to create one island, this one on its own, which counts as an island, and these two connecting adjacently to form the third island. So let's jump into the explanation. So we have two examples here. Let's start off with grid one. So in this grid, we know that we want to be returning a number or a count, right? So we can have a count variable, which we can initially set to zero. And what we need to do is we need to loop through this grid and we need to find a position that is equal to the string of one. Okay, so say we started here at the first position, we have a one. So we have an island, but we need to check its adjacent values to see whether the island or whether this piece of land is connected to other pieces of land to form a larger island. So the way that we could do this is to use DFS, recursive solution that checks all possible solutions. And with DFS, we have base cases. So in order to check all potential values, we need to go in four different directions, right? So we need to go up, right, down, left, but well, we first need to decide when to hop out of this DFS recursive call. And the first case that we can think of is if the neighboring element or the neighboring value is equal to a zero, because that signifies water, right? So if grid at i, j, so let's assume i is the row and j is the column. If grid at i, j is equal to zero as a string, then we can return out of this recursive function. Now, the second base case we need to think of is if it's inbound. And what I mean by inbound is making sure that the value we're on is within this orange box so it doesn't go out of bound. So if i is less than zero, we're going to be outside here. So i is less than zero, that's out of bound. If i is greater than this grid here, if it's greater than grid.length minus one, and that's also out of bounds. So if i is greater than grid dot length minus one, that's also out of bound because the grid length here is five. The index of that is four. So if it's greater than four, so the index of four would be here. If it's greater than four, then it's out of bound on this side. And then we do the same for columns, right? So we do the same for j. So if j is less than zero, it's out of bounds up here. And if j is greater than grid at i dot length minus one, then that's also out of bounds and that'll be out of bounds down here. So we need, to, we need to specify i so that we go down. So those are the base cases resolved. Now we can carry out the recursion, right? So we can move right, down, left, and up from this initial position. Now let's take care of these two positions. So this one is going out of bounds because i is less than zero, so that's not gonna work. Going up, j is less than zero, so that's not gonna work, so that's out of bounds. So we know that we can go to this value and this value. So say we carried out our recursion on this value. So we go up, that's out of bounds. We go right, that works absolutely fine. So we can go there. We go down, that goes to there, that's absolutely fine. But we also go backwards. So we go back to this previous one. Now we can't allow that to happen because that's gonna create an infinite loop. So what do we do in this case? Well, we could store all positions that we've looked at within a set. So we could store i and j within here. But the only issue with that is that it takes extra space. So what we could do instead is we could manipulate this grid in place. So before we move from the first position, we set this to zero. Now when we move to this position, if we go backwards, it's gonna hit one of our base cases where grid at ij is equal to zero, and then it's gonna hop out of that. So it's only gonna check the positions that are equal to one. And then we can carry this out. We can go to all the different positions, check everywhere, and once we hit zeros, we're gonna realize we've reached all the positions 
where there are neighboring ones and we're going to hop out but we need to specify that we've hit a number of islands so we need to specify here to return one and then outside of this dfs we can increment count because count is going to be incremented by this one okay so count is going to go to one and then it's going to return the answer because it's going to check all the other possible solutions because all of these ones are going to be reset to zero and then it's going to check all the other positions and they're all set to zero and once we reach the end pop out return the count and it's pretty much the same for the second example okay so we start off at the first value we go right down we can't go left because it's out of bounds we can't go up because that's out of bounds and then this is set to zero this one can't go up because it's out of bounds can't go left because we've reset that to zero can't go right because that's at zero but it does find a neighboring one down here so we can do the dfs on this and this one is going to check values as well so here we're going to go left right down there are no extra values so this one gets set to zero this one is going to check right that's already set at zero down that's set to zero that's out of bounds so now we can increment our count by one so count is now equal to one or we carry on traversing the grid we find the next position where there is one here is the position so we carry out the dfs function from here and we recurse in all four directions they're all pointing to zero so we can hop out of this and increment count then we move along until we reach another one and do the exact same here so we check all directions out of bound zero zero point into one check this one but before we do that we set that to zero goes this way can't go this way can't go right cannot go down cannot go left anymore because we set the previous one to zero so we increment count again so that's the basic understanding of this question and how we formulate an answer now let's talk about time and space complexity so with time complexity it's o m by n where m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns and then space complexity is the exact same in the worst case scenario we are storing up to m by n within our stack for the dfs recursive solution so let's start off by initializing count to zero we need to find all the positions in the grid that are equal to one so let's loop through the grid i is equal to zero i is less than grid dot length so this is going right j is equal to zero j is less than grid i dot length so that's going down so it loops through the entire grid now we need to check if grid up position ij is equal to the string of one if it is we are going to carry out some recursive function to check all other possible positions so dfs we're going to pass in the grid because we need to update the grid in place we're going to pass in i which is going to be the rows and j which is going to be the columns so let's create that function so function dfs so we need to pass in the grid row and column so in this first thing we do is set the base cases so if row is less than zero or row is greater than grid dot length minus one so if too far to the left too far to the right is out of bounds column is less than zero or column is greater than grid dot length sorry grid at row dot length because we're going down minus one so if too far up or too far down that's out of bounds and finally grid at row column is equal to zero so if it's water we don't want to check that because it's not a neighboring island if any of these are true then we just return out of this recursive call next we need to set grid at row column to equal zero so we need to stop any further dfs calls from going back to previous positions the way we do that is we set the current value of grid to zero and then finally we need to recurse in all four directions up down left and right so we need to call dfs four times passing in grid row plus one will go down row minus one will go up call plus one will go to the right call minus one will go to the left and finally once we found all neighboring islands we need to return one 
so that this function actually returns something. And up here, this is going to return one. So we need to increment count by that value. So we can say count is equal to count plus DFS. And then finally we can return count. See if this has worked. Okay, it's been accepted, let's submit it. Okay, and there you have it.